Persian users have good technical background, however, they haven't applied those skills into larger projects. What would be your advice to those users? Um, so my advice to those users is as intimidating as I know it might be to start on a larger project, um, you absolutely need to have a larger project if you, you know, want to go into the, particularly if you want to go into the gaming industry, but if you want to go into software engineering in general, personal projects is probably one of the easiest ways to show both dedication and skill. So I mentioned it before, but it really comes down to, you know, starting small, you know, decide on a project that does not seem intimidating at all because um, it'll probably be harder than you think it is. Um, so just start with something small and then once you finish that, you know, put it on your resume, start another thing. And you know, you'd start with like a one month project, two month project, four month project, you know, six, a year long. So you just kind of build up to where you're comfortable and you'll get faster over time and it'll become less and less intimidating. So just, just try to be consistent, but yeah, you definitely need to do it. Uh, and again, I mentioned this before, but also I think when you get to the larger projects, having a team to encourage you um, and not only to encourage you, but you know, to get a higher quality product, right? But for me personally, I found it way easier when, you know, I know that I have to get something done because there's a deadline, because there's people who are waiting for it, right? When you're working on your own project, it's very easy to just say, okay, well, I'm over it, I'm gonna stop. But if you, if you have a team that's relying on you, then you can't really say that. So um, it's definitely, I always have, for, for all of my major projects that went on my resume, I had a team behind me as well. So for those users who are not yet in a company with a team, mm -hmm. um, what will be your recommendation for them? So when I say team, and, and you know, I'm talking about personal projects here or, or independent projects, whether or not they're as a part of a company or not, because um, I guess an indie game is, you know, a, technically a company. But so, you know, before I was working at Sledgehammer while I was working at Yahoo. So I had a full-time job, which I assume is gonna apply um, to most of your users who are doing other things right now. So I have a full-time job and I you know, would commit maybe you know, an hour or two hours a night um, to my own personal project. So I was working on a VR project when I didn't have a team. So I was, I would kind of work on that in my spare time. And then I just connected with people I used to went to school used to go to school with um, friends of mine they had friends and you know I was just kind of you know talking with people and said hey you know this sounds like something interests align maybe we could work together on this and it's not like we're all software engineers right um, you know I'm a software engineer you know this person's a, a game designer this person's a sound engineer this person is you know an artist right so we're all of different backgrounds and does you don't have to find a group that all does the same thing um, but what's important is you find a group that actually actually wants to commit to working on something. So it doesn't have to be a game. In my case, it was a game because that's what my passion is. Um, but you know, if you want to make some kind of app, a website or whatever it is, there's all kinds of things that you can work on. Again, this is where networking is really important. Going to hackathons and meetups and finding communities that you can um, network with people and really just connect with other people with similar interests. How can I find the topic for the small personal project? Should I just participate in the hackathon? Um, so participating in a hackathon is a great way to pick a project because, you know, you start it, you don't really have much time to think about it, you just kind of do whatever their theme is and, you know, you go into it. Um, you know, some people continue working on hackathons after the hackathon ends just because they actually realize that, hey, like, I kind of liked this idea. Maybe I should keep building on it. Um, but a lot of people, like myself, I you know usually the hackathon is done, and then I say, okay, I want to move on to other things. Um, but when it comes to picking, I think uh, again, if you if there's not some external thing like a hackathon or someone else who's bringing an idea to you, um, then I would just say, you know, just try to think of something that, um, you know, either you don't have in your life or, you know, if it's an app, you know, it's like, what, what do I need in my life? I don't have this thing in my life. Maybe I should build an app for it. If it's a game, say, you know, you can do it, you know, two different ways or not, all kinds of ways, but you could do it, you know, I haven't seen this kind of type of game. Let me try to make that. Or you can say, I love this type of game. Let me try to replicate. It. There's nothing wrong with pretty much cloning something else for the sake of your own um, learning, right? If someone who is looking for a job at Sledgehammer comes to me, you know, particularly like a, a student or someone who's just learned computer science, comes to me and says, hey, I cloned, you know, Super Mario Brothers, I'd be like, 
That's amazing. You made a very popular game by yourself or in it with a small team, which is pretty impressive, right? So it's not like, you know, as long as you're not selling it and you're not going to get into a lawsuit issue, then that's totally fine, right? So just, you know, do whatever, you know, you have to kind of find your own way when it comes to deciding on games, but there's all kinds of paths you can choose to make that happen. Uh, how many projects do you have when you're a college student? <laughs> I was learning the fundamentals definitely up until I was a, a professional, and I would say well into being a professional. I think uh, being, you know, the, the fundamentals are pretty vast. And, you know, I think most people who graduate college aren't like amazing programmers, right? Like when you're getting hired as a junior engineer, you're like still pretty basic. So um, don't, again, you know, it's, it's fine if you don't feel like you know everything. But, um, but in terms of the projects that I was building, um, and again, you don't need to be an expert to have a lot of projects. I probably built... I don't know, somewhere like between six and eight games before I graduated. Um, so yeah, because essentially you would build like two to three games in the school year um, as a student. And then I did, you know, I had I, one summer I built two games for part of an internship. Um, you know, I would work on, um, on the art teams for the game for the senior projects every year. So I was on, I, was, I probably made, yeah, like eight plus games. I, I can share with you my GitHub. Most of them are on there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, but if you see them, like most of them are pretty small. Um, you know, something you can build in like JavaScript, um, not that necessarily makes it small, but um, you know, most of them are incredibly complicated. Um, they're, they're something that you can finish in, you know, if you were dedicating time to it, you could finish it in, you know, a couple months. Um, but again, that's really what you know, people want to see when they look at your, when they're looking at your resume, they just want to see that you love making games or you love making applications, essentially just love what you do and you put time into it. And I think it's really important to talk about the, the, um, the projects you're working on outside of school or whatever, you know, uh, program you're in, right? If you come to me saying that you learned, um, you know, you learned JavaScript and you got this certification um, through this, you know, program, then I'd say, okay, that's cool. And you know, I'm glad that you know JavaScript. Have you done anything outside of what the program told you specifically to do? And then, you know, if they have nothing to say, then I immediately assume, okay, this person either isn't that invested, invested or they're not that creative or, you know, there's all kinds of things that are gonna run through my head. But ultimately I wanna see someone who's willing to put in extra work in their personal time to work on a project that they like, that they're passionate.